Hey guys, welcome to Sketch Today. It's me, Spencer. We are back from the mountain compound, bunker, all that good stuff. Actually, I just live in Salt Lake City, Utah. And yes, I am homeschooling or hanging out with the kids this week. So apologies in advance if you hear any sounds, rumblings, all that good stuff. Things might be a little bit off for a while. If this is your first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on alerts, and definitely come say hi on the socials. I am at sketchaday.com on Instagram and occasionally I'm on Facebook as well. And you can sign up for my newsletter at sketchaday.com. Why would you do that? Well, you get this free super sketch tip guide. So if the videos aren't enough, you also get this awesome PDF that you can check out. And it's a collection of knowledge, um, things that I've experienced and even includes a tutorial for you guys. So today I'm going to sketch some furniture, specifically an office chair, and we'll go through the process. Thanks again to Chad Sanborn for donating to the channel. Shout out and props because I have some new markers I can use to do this demo as well. A few of you have been asking me for a demo tutorial, some explanation of how I draw furniture, and I thought, what if we just did an office chair? Pretty simple pretty direct and we can do a couple of views. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I thought I'd use some tracing paper today because I can kind of show how my chart packs work on this paper along with my markers. I'm going to be using a paper made flare as well. Now for an office chair, I don't have one in my head or sorry, I don't have one for reference right here. So I'm just going to start by drawing a couple of things, just pretty simple. Keep it simple right now. So we have a side view and maybe just a front view here of what our chair would look like. And I'm keeping this blocked out simple so we can understand the shapes. And we'll start with the shapes and then we will finish things out with actually sculpting the design. But by blocking out the shapes, it gives me a pretty quick and easy way to understand what's happening. So I can jump in and start designing the actual product. So. At times, if I'm not entirely sure of something, I will actually just do blocks. And these blocks can help me place things. So for our block sketch here, I'm going to draw one line to start just about there. Actually, I'm going to move it up just a little bit. And hopefully you can kind of see what's happening with the relationship on these lines. But really what I'm trying to do is sketch the back in blocks and the seat on this chair. So I have these two planes now. And we also have some sort of armrest thing happening. So I'm just gonna, I started with this line, sketching to the right in this direction here, and back to the front, I can now establish a plane for my armrest. And I know these extend out just a little bit looking at my front view sketch here. So I'm just gonna now block this in or blocks here just like so keep it rough keep it sketchy all right and now I can do the same for my seat just block this in like so I know on the base I do have so what I've done here is just drawn an X on that box and where this intersects much like if you draw a square on a piece of paper and you were to draw from corner to corner, it's a good way to find the halfway point in that box. So that's what I did here. And with that, I can draw another box, an ellipse, project down like so, another box, and an ellipse, and now I have a post for the chair. Now on my design, I have these wheels that are kind of at an angle, so if I sketch down like so, in fact, we could sketch an entire box to describe the limits of where these pieces are going to go. So here I've got one arm, two, the one in the back is going to appear shorter because it's further away, three and four. And let's say this is where our wheels are going to be mounted. And I'm just going to add a little design detail. Maybe there's some little color pop or something where the wheels would be. And then for the wheels themselves, I like to just kind of scribble in some ellipses, making sure that the axis of that ellipse is consistent with 
the direction of that perspective line, okay? Something like that, and then another ellipse here for the rest of the chair. And so, like I said, we're just blocking things in. So for the back of the chair as well, I'm gonna make it kind of a wedge shape, okay? So that our spine is nice and supported on this chair. And conveniently, I'll just use these lines together like so. And now I have, now I have the bottom of the chair and the top and we have our arms. Now as far as how the arms attach to the chair, they could, they could wrap around the back. There could be another member that comes up. I'm gonna sketch in another member here and always try and project off either just at a glance, project off to the side so you can kind of place things. I can tell that this arm is, it needs to be a little bit longer. So I'm gonna fix that like so. So now it shouldn't feel as weird in the front. And I have this member here. I can bring this underneath like so. Just a little bit of a round. And we'll use some line weight, color, and so forth to uh, fix this up and finish it, OK? So just working now, now that we have our form, we can transition to doing divide and basically I'm just going to be applying transitions to the form. So when I draw a lot of times what I like to do is a three step process of form, divide and beautify. So the first step form is all about capturing the three dimensional representation of the object. Divide is breaking it into functional bits and also transitioning. So things like fillets or chamfers, that kind of thing, sweeps. And the third step is to beautify. That is applying my color, materials, notes, all that good stuff. So now, as I'm dividing this, I'm thinking of, okay, what are perhaps some materials or elements that need to be broken out here? Um, maybe I need to shorten the arms, for example. These are all things that can take place in this divide phase. And a lot of times, sketches can look messy when you have all these lines going on, um, but you can you can do an overlay if you're concerned about the clarity of your sketch. I feel as though the color and materials are going to help this come together along with the line weight. So I'm going to press ahead here and keep applying just material changes or breaks where I feel I need them to kind of help finish out the structural portion of the sketch. All right. So I think we have enough here that I can start to apply some marker. And again, because this is tracing paper, I can lift the paper, flip it, draw on the back, all that good stuff. Now, once again, thanks Chad for the markers. Chad had some questions about paper and how they work with chart packs. So in the video yesterday, which was about drawing a car two ways. You saw a chart pack on marker paper. It looks awesome. It looks amazing. On tracing paper, because these markers are juicy, I anticipate that there's going to be some bleed back and forth, and um, it's going to it's going to take a little bit longer to dry, for example. So I'm going to try and be careful here, but I do want the fabric on this chair to be green. So I'm going with a green seat here. And so just tracing, we're not tracing, but rather outlining the seat cushion. I'm going to just kind of sweep over with the marker. And the reason I start on the back is I want to keep it lighter um, before I'm ready to go completely dark um, with those co colors or tones. All right. Also, you may be wondering, oh, the, the bottom of this chair looks really small. Um, you know, the, the wheels and the legs and so forth. And really what's happening is you're having a bit of foreshortening as it pertains to three point perspective happening. So in case you're like me and I was actually thinking, wow, that looks kind of weird. It's because of the, the perspective with which you draw your stuff. Sometimes your eyes can play tricks on you. All right, so just continuing to fill in here with this green, this is a chartreuse green and because I shaded on the back 
I can now come on the front here and the shade. Okay. And with, with these markers and with tracing paper, the ink seems to be resistant to the marker, so check, that's good. And while they are juicy, I'm trying to not linger on the paper, so to speak, meaning rest in one spot too long and give it too much of a chance to bleed through to the other side. Now for the armrests and base and all of that, I'm going to jump to these other chart packs. We have some really dark ones, some lighter ones. I'm going to use a combination of dark and light. So let's start with the back. This is a very juicy cool gray seven. But when we flip this over, it should appear a bit lighter than you're seeing it on this side of the tracing paper. So you can you can use the properties of the materials you choose to your advantage as you're sketching if you're careful and thoughtful about what you're doing. All right, so let me grab this cool gray five and I'll use this on the, uh, this one's a little stuck. Sometimes these chart pack markers get stuck and you kind of have to use your teeth or some pliers to get them open. I think it's the ink and how it dries. All right, so just on this top surface, I'm gonna use this gray. Now when I flip it over, you can see there's some value change and difference. And I can hit these sides with the five, for example, and we'll come back with the seven. But just wanna communicate the shadowing and so forth on these parts. On the armrest here, I can do the same. Shade on the back or the front. I, I tend to like to shade on the back first, um, just to avoid a situation where I've shaded something in too dark and need to go lighter. So that's why I like to start on the back of the drawing. But if you're feeling fairly confident, you can always start on the front. And if you're working with a light enough marker. Okay, so let's just finish out some of the gray bits here. Add some shadowing. Keep it fresh, crisp, and clean if you can as you apply your marker. It's gonna help your drawing just have, have a bit of life. I, I definitely feel as though when you're drawing, your attitude, mindset, all of that does translate to the final thing. So be sure to be mindful of how you're feeling when you're drawing because I do feel as though it makes an actual difference as you're drawing. Okay, so back to this cool gray seven. I'm gonna hit these sides for shadow. Contrast is your friend, okay? Lightest lights against darkest darks. Don't be afraid to push that contrast and value in your sketches. It's gonna help things feel more three-dimensional, clear, deliberate and definitive as you're sketching. So that's something I've had to work on over the years, but it's something that will make a big difference, I feel, in your sketches as you're working. Okay, I have these other greens, so I'm gonna try and push the value on the side of this chair, for example. So I've got this jade green. Now, fortunately, tracing paper does not absorb the ink as much as a regular paper. So what's happening is the pigment in the xylene marker is essentially picking up and waking up the, the other color um, that's already there. So it, it leads to some interesting opportunities for blending. Um, I'm kind of getting this, this watercolor look almost on the side. And that's okay, because we now have the contrast that we're after. So I'm just gonna put a piece of paper behind this because I wanna show you what this looks like. Because tracing paper is translucent, sometimes it's hard to kind of see what's happening, but with this paper behind, now you can kind of see the sketch there. And I'm missing just two more things. I need a little heavier uh, line weight on the outside of the sketch in certain areas. So I'm just gonna use this Copic wide marker and just on the underside of some of these elements, I'm gonna apply a little heavier line weight here. 
on the back side of the chair as well. Down to the legs, like so. Just like that. And now I can flip over and do a shadow. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll take this pencil and I'll just project down a couple lines, okay? And this is gonna tell me kind of where my shadow needs to be, right? So if this armrest, for example, is sticking out, I'm just gonna do a simple drop shadow on this. But if this armrest is sticking out there, here for example, same thing, I'm gonna have a little bit of the outline of the chair. And so I just want to be mindful of that as I put the shadow in place. So now for the shadow, we can do something like this cool gray seven um, or something even darker if we want, or if we just want to keep it a nice light shadow that works, it's just up to you to decide. I'm going to go with something a little bit light just because the legs are kind of dark and I don't want to muddy the rest of the drawing. So I'll come in with this cool gray three chart pack and just flood the area like so. And now I have a light shadow that is a part of the sketch. Now I can, in addition to this, now that it's flipped over, right under the legs, where the legs are anyways, we want to indicate a bit of a ground plane. So just carrying the shadow through, if we need to enhance that, we can use some pencil. And the reason I'm doing this is just to show that, yes, the chair is resting on the ground. Interesting effect with the xylene and the pencil, actually. Um, and I think poss a possible topic for another video. But as I was shading, the ink of the xylene marker actually interacted with the lead of the pencil. Um, so that was interesting. But hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys were able to follow along a bit. If you did draw one, that's awesome. Props to you. I'm going to add a couple more things here. Maybe just some some texture stippling or dots on the fabric itself, just to help it read. We can add notes if necessary. Okay, things like that. Um, always helps the sketch. I did, I did neglect to add something like an adjustment lever of some sort um, if you want to adjust the height. So I'm just going to fudge that in just on the side here. And looking at the sketch, you know, I sometimes I like to think, okay, what would you change about a drawing that you just made? And I can see the base. I would probably make it just a little bit wider so it feels more balanced. But other than that, all in all, I think this is a decent, I think this is a decent show of the process of drawing this chair. Sorry, I had a little brain freeze there couple more stipples for the armrest and like I said if you need to add a note you know if this is the adjustment layer be sure to check out my video on designer notes designer writing and how to do that adjustment lever it's all about drawing your letters and being purposeful and thoughtful about how you do that well, thanks for joining me on sketch a day today. I know this was a long video. So if you've made it this far, kudos to you. You're an all-star. You are a true super fan. If you didn't make it this far, go back and watch the rest of the video, but in all seriousness, thank you so much. Come find me on the socials. I'm at sketchaday.com. Definitely hit subscribe, turn on alerts. I'll be going live quite a bit more, especially as we're all hunkered down here and be sure to visit sketchaday.com slash newsletter and sign up for that newsletter because some goodies are coming real soon. Also, you'll want to set a reminder for Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific because I go live from this studio to the whole universe world and we'll draw and sketch and do things together. And if you have any suggestions, be sure to hit me with those either during the stream, but preferably before the stream so that I can be ready to answer your questions. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time right here on Sketch Day.